The overarching story of Mob Psycho pertains to Salt Metal's own Takane Subomi. She was the end game from the beginning, the final boss of the series. In a narrative about interpersonal growth, the confrontation between Mob and Subomi was inescapable. The main reason for him longing to improve in the first place was incited by his infatuation with Subomi. The feeling spurred him to partake in recreations that he wouldn't normally subject himself to. That motivation would supersede itself in the future when he began wanting to improve for himself and not just for others. But at the core of his refinement was a pathway towards the setting sun with Subomi by his side. He knew that he had to face her one day, but he just didn't feel presently equipped to have that interaction occur yet. That's why he went on those so-called side missions. The purpose was to reinforce himself with confidence in the skills that he knew he was lacking in, leveling up his character. To get the girl, he had to do X, Y, and Z. The first couple of steps in his plan included adding muscle to his frame and becoming someone who could lead others publicly. What Mob didn't realize at the time, what Mob didn't take into account before enacting on those endeavors, is that his mindset was based on his impressions alone. He doesn't know the specific attributes about a person that would actually impress Subomi. He was just sort of generalizing and imagining an image of himself that could win her over. As time went on, he had interactions with people who weren't Subomi. Smaller battles which made him recognize that X, Y, and Z doesn't necessarily guarantee a relationship with someone. What if accomplishing those objectives led him to the same outcome that happened to him when he was younger? At the outset, Tsubomi was impressed by the demonstration of his psychic powers. Mob took her praise and ran with it. And that's the very moment where he was led astray. He was warping objects around them, causing things to levitate just to entertain her. Until it got to the point where it became a stunt, just like any other. Tsubomi's attention dwindled. Because his actions didn't have any substance behind them, Mob perceived her unenthused gesturing as a signal to back off, much to his dismay. And he did so most humbly because he cared enough about her to retreat, despite never wanting to leave her side in the first place. If he had just communicated with Sibomi instead of presuming on the outlook of her boredom, they could have remained friends without having to demote himself to a mere acquaintance. But to Mob's credit, he was just a kid who didn't have the comprehension that Tsubomi had at the time. But to Tsubomi's credit, she knew that about him. It's easy to paint her as someone who was indifferent to Mob in the past because we're solely viewing the story from his misconstrued perspective. I'm almost certain that she attempted to assist him against overly thinking and dictating a better result from his interactions. Because Mob isn't the only one who lost a friend at the playground. Subomi also lost a friend in Mob as well. Recalling the moment where Mob salvaged Demi's novel with his telekinesis supports that theory. After handing her writing back, the camera pans downward away from Emi and Mob to reveal that Subomi had seen everything that had just transpired between them. She seemed impressed by the display of his psychic abilities during that moment. So then what finally altered her opinion regarding his powers? The truth of the matter is that Tsubomi's standing hasn't changed whatsoever. Before, Mob used his telekinesis as a parlor trick to amuse Tsubomi and to gain her audience from it. This time, he wasn't exploiting his gift for someone's recognition. He was simply doing a kind deed for someone. The kindness surrounding that deed is what Tsubomi was impressed by, and not his powers. Like Reagan said, psychic powers are just another characteristic. It's the same as people who are fast, people who are book smart, and people with strong body odor. The actual truth behind one's charm is kindness. Parts of that quote were rearranged, and it has an entirely different context from the topic at hand. Nonetheless, it was brought up because the advice given to him by Reagan at the time became words that Mob chose to live by henceforth. 
living positively paid off in the end because the audience was privy to something that Tsubomi has a liking for. It isn't plentiful muscles, it isn't strong leadership qualities either. What she seemingly applauds above those things are people who elect to do good for themselves and for others. Mob knows that psychic powers aren't enough to woo someone like Tsubomi. She's just not that kind of person. To her, it's just another characteristic one possesses, and he's known that for years. What he doesn't know is that after years off target, he was finally on the right track towards Tsubomi's consideration. But before he had time to fully show Tsubomi the type of person that he had become, an announcement completely disoriented the social state of Salt Middle. The breaking news was that Tsubomi was slated to move. Life was happening outside the scope of Mob's control, and suddenly, pressure began to set in. If he didn't express his feelings to her soon, then the chance at that would leave at the same time that she leaves. The worst part about this predicament is that Mob was working up the courage to steadily involve himself more socially with Tsubomi. He finally spoke to her after who knows how long, saved her from imminent humiliation even. Repositioning his way back into her life was no longer at his own pace, and it was dramatically expedited by this untimely departure. He never really got the opportunity to know her, nor did she get to know him. As a matter of fact, I doubt they could even claim to know each other's favorite color. When inquired about the actual reason why he liked Tsubomi, his head became hollow in order to prevent him from saying anything primitive in response. Why does Mob reserve a long-standing fondness towards someone whom he barely even knows? How are his feelings different from the rest of the contenders who are vying for a chance at Tsubomi? It all feels superficial. And that's because it is. There's barely any death to his crush, which usually foretells that a confession is doomed to begin with. But I believe that Mob knew that self-consciously. How could he not when his peers were getting their hearts shattered one after the other? His friends and family were extremely anxious about his ambition as well. I believe that at some point, the motive to profess his love stopped being about having a relationship with Tsubomi, and it became more about putting himself out there for someone. Mob accepted that this wouldn't work out well for him long before he even dialed Tsubomi, because he was properly assessing the atmosphere of the situation at long last. Yet he rang her up anyway because it was something that he had to overcome in order to not repress his feelings like before. It was something that he had to say, loud and clear this time. Having people who sincerely care about him made this decision easier for him to come to terms with. Mob knew that in the fallout of his meeting with Tsubomi, he would be able to depend on the support system of friends. He had to uplift him from the sorrow. They did that, and then some, when they all came to help save him from himself. It just happened to occur before and not after confronting Tsubomi. Everything that had transpired had all led up to the moment, faded at the playground, where the final boss was waiting in the arena. And... It ensued just as you would expect. Tsubomi rejected Mob. The exchange between them wasn't fully played out for the audience. Even though these are fictional characters, the author and the animators had the respect to let Tsubomi and Mob have their privacy. From the little that we did see, nothing was framed with any kind of spectacle, which in all honesty reflects that of real life occurrences. People usually play up scenarios like this in their head, but when the grand reveal of their feelings is verbalized, everything is just as ordinary as it usually is. Tsubomi has received a lot of hate for what she did to our protagonist, but to those people, I'd like to offer this viewpoint. When someone likes you, even if you're dull to their indications, you can kind of surmise that they're infatuated with you. Tsubomi probably already formulated how she felt about Mob. Her opinion of him was likely holstered for a long time. I understand that she was written as this trope love interest that would guarantee Mob his happy ending when she was introduced, 
But as we found out by the end, that wasn't the case at all. She was thankfully written as a person. If she would have reciprocated her ungrounded love for Mop during that instance, then that's someone I wouldn't want for him anyway. Because real intimacy is earned and not given. Mob walks away from the battle, seemingly unscathed. As stated, he knew that this outcome was coming, but he wasn't braced for the intensity of emotions that were produced in the aftermath. And so, he cried regardless. He also didn't know whether he ruined his relationship with Tsubomi as a consequence of his confession. A rejection like that would normally divide people from interacting with each other altogether after all. Mob was dealt another ultimatum. He could back off as he did formally, subduing his emotions. Or he could foster his friendship with Tsubomi, in spite of all the drama. Remedying the mistake that he committed at the same playground all those years ago. Time elapses, and we know that he chose the latter. They became friends again, but more importantly, Mob's affection throughout the series wasn't stunted by this one event. To the contrary, who's to say that he can't go past that fog wall and try again in the future? After learning her attack pattern, after actually getting to know her better, because despite of all the growth he's realized up until this point, this really was just the beginning for our boy Mob.